Hey you all, thanks for coming back to my channel. I am Brandy from Stay Forever True. It's hot outside, but I wanted to give you all like a little outside ambiance. So let's talk about starting your own container garden. So if you are looking to do that, I'm sure you've watched plenty of videos here on YouTube and it can be very overwhelming. Last year during, during the whole you know situation that we had in 2020, uh, I decided to start a container garden and I did it actually before everything started to happen and then when it happened I was like oh my gosh I'm so glad that I have this because having a garden is truly your own oasis it's truly therapy it's freaking magical like it's it's a beautiful thing um, but I did learn a lot of things while we had our container garden and I want to share those with you all so First off, of course, you wanna know what zone you're in. So right now I'm here in St. Louis, Missouri. This is zone 5B. If you know what zone you're in, then you'll know what type of fruits and vegetables and plants can grow in your area. And that's gonna be important because I like, I wouldn't be able to grow a mango here, right? Because those probably do well more like in zone sevens, like down in Florida or California. I don't even know if mangoes do well in California, but any home, they'll do better in different climates. So I won't, you could probably grow a mango in a different zone than what it's supposed to be in, but you probably gotta do a lot of work to make that mango do something. And you know, it's best to just grow things that are in your zone um, it just makes it a lot easier especially when you're starting off so know what your grow zone is and then you can pick and choose different uh, fruits and vegetables based on that next is that you need to realize you can grow anything in containers you can grow anything in containers as long as you have the right size container you have the right drainage and you have the right nutrients in that soil you can grow anything in containers so do not feel like it limits you because you have something in a container. Um, it doesn't, it really does not. And it's a lot of benefits to growing uh, your fruits and vegetables in containers. So first, just realize that you can grow anything. You just have to do your research and find what different varieties or different sizes can grow in your area. So for example, I really am manifesting a lemon tree, okay? But I'm, instead of getting a full blown, like regular schmegular lemon tree and putting it in a container, I may wanna go ahead and get a dwarf uh, tree like a tree they consider it only grows up to a certain height so I might want to just get that so I can also take it into my home during the the warm the colder months so it doesn't die right so just keep that in mind you can grow anything in containers one of the biggest things about growing in containers is the actual container so <laughs> duh right this is the vessel that you're gonna grow your food in so you have to be aware of what type of containers did you need to use? So I suggest that you look at what does the mature, what does this plant look like when it's mature? That'll give you an idea of what size container that you need. So for example, or you can also just look up uh, containers for growing da, da 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 and it'll tell you like a diameter that you need to grow it in right but for example I didn't do any research I just started putting stuff in the dang on pots and I had this little bitty pot that I put two broccoli uh, plants in when I looked up what how broccoli grows broccoli is massive broccoli is huge like the leaves they just take over and it's just one little head of lettuce I mean one little head of broccoli in there so I was like oh I have to spread this out and even when I did that the container was still too small even when I took out one plant and just left one in there it was still too small and that leads me to my next tip is that you should um, also think about if your space is limited, you should think, I got this uh, idea from another YouTuber. I think it's Rustic Roots and Rust Rustic Roots. Um, oh my gosh, I don't know the name of her channel. But anywho, she was saying, you know, if you have small space, you have to think, do I really want to use this pot to grow broccoli and I'm only going to get one head of broccoli off of it? all this space for one head of broccoli or do I want to use this and grow some beans and I can get beans throughout the entire summer? And broccoli takes a minute to grow from my experience it takes a minute to grow and then it goes to seed like crazy so um so yeah you have to think this this growing this is it gonna is it gonna be worth it when it comes time to harvest that's what she talked about in her video and i i think that's a good thing to think about when you're growing certain things versus like a tomato you pick a tomato and then the next week there's another tomato growing right there like it's gonna keep continuing to give you food throughout the entire growing season compared to something like carrots, um, potatoes, and like broccoli or cauliflower. 
you're only gonna get that one thing. Now with broccoli, you do kind of get little shoots that come off of it too, but it's like, I mean, a shoot that you would literally just throw in a salad. Like it's not that much of a broccoli head from that. So keep that in mind as well. Just a little tip for you all. Um, so definitely use your space wisely. Know what type of containers that you need for your uh, specific thing that you're growing. But I think as a, as a start for most things, five gallon buckets, for most things, five gallon buckets is a lot of space because it's very deep. So the roots can really set in there and it's still pretty slim. So you can kind of get a few of them like in one row and you can still have a lot of space on your patio or wherever you're growing your um, container garden. Five gallon buckets are bay. You can get them off of Facebook Marketplace. If you know somebody who might have like one of my friends, she um, she sells pickles. So she has she had pickle jars all last year to give to me. I was like, yes, thank you, thank you. I literally just cleaned them out and let them sit out in the sun and let the sun kind of get some of that pickle smell out of it. But it was okay. Once I threw the dirt in there and started growing my vegetables in there, it was perfectly fine. So definitely get you some five gallon buckets. It's okay to use seedlings. So some people feel like using seedlings is like is a uh, is cheating is not it's okay to use seedlings, especially when you start later in the season that's okay compared to you using starting from seed so like right now we're in the end of march i'm probably going to be buying some seedlings because i have been really behind on starting my own plants so i'm probably going to be buying some seedlings some people feel like it's a waste of money yada 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 but i think once you think about the time that you put into growing something from seed versus just paying for of course you can buy a bag of seeds for a dollar or 25 cents grow it and you can save money that way versus buying only four starter plants and sp spending like four or five dollars on those starter plants yeah you know it's a little bit more money but all the time and energy that you're putting into growing those those seeds those plants from seed just go ahead and just buy the dang on the starter seed it's okay it's okay as long as you um you look at it so that's my next tip when you are buying starter plants when i say starter plants it's plants that's already been started for you from seed uh you can get them from like farmer's market which is a great way to get starters or you can get them from big box stores like home depot and um lowe's and places like that but i love to get them from farmers markets uh you're usually supporting someone that's local um more than likely i wouldn't say that it's organic but more than likely you know it's just a local source and they have different varieties there and it's usually a lot cheaper like i was able to get a lot of starters for like two dollars last year going to my farmers markets or even to local nurseries so any home when you get that starter what you need to do is before you buy it look under every single leaf i feel like buying starters they are notorious for having stuff all over them little stuff growing all over them don't buy them because for me like i just my plants have not done well once i buy stuff that has all this crap on it you can probably try to cut the leaves off but it's only so many leaves on one starter so look underneath each leaf see if it's any bugs or anything in there look in the soil if you can and just see how it's looking look at the health of the plant not just oh these leaves look good it looks pretty healthy no you need to actually look under the leaf because that's where all the critters reside okay okay next is you don't have to start everything at once i think like when you first start you're like oh i want to grow this i want to grow this i want to grow this and it becomes again overwhelming you can just start off and say what are the five things that i want to grow and you all please grow stuff that you eat I, I be in these Facebook groups and people be like, look at all this basil I got. I don't like eating uh, pesto, so what should I do with this basil? Why did you grow the basil to begin with? Like, why? Why did you grow that basil? Because it looked good because you just want to say you grew some basil. That's okay, but you need to grow the things that you are going to eat. People, people grow a lot of tomatoes. If you don't like tomatoes, don't grow tomatoes. It makes no sense to do that, right? So start with the things that you actually will eat, that your family will eat, so you're not wasting this food. Next, like I said, is to start small and then as you get the groove of it as you go into the season then you can add more items to your container garden you don't have to do a whole bunch okay just start off with a few plants see how you like it you know a small low investment for me i knew for sure i was going to do this like i was going to make it happen so i was like buying all types of stuff i knew i was going to do it i was like this is what i've been wanting to do so i just went in all the way in right but you could just start off with something small you like peppers just start off with a pepper plant. 
peppers look beautiful by the way they have gorgeous leaves like peppers are so beautiful to grow oh my gosh but yes start off with like a little pepper plant or you can maybe think about okay let me think of five things i want to grow you might want to just do some lettuce tomatoes some peppers maybe some onions onions take a little bit of time to grow though but maybe some spring onions right you just cut off the top of them and I just want to be able to make a little salad or I just want to start off with lettuce like different varieties of lettuce and I want to be able to make me some salads throughout the summer and come out here and cut off from my lettuce and throw it on a sandwich whatever the case may be start off with something small and lettuce is a great it's something really easy to start off with and it's very rewarding to start off with something like lettuce you can make yourself like I said it's a little salad um, garden okay so you got your lettuce your tomatoes um, your peppers things like that that you want to start off with something else that's somewhat easy to start off with are herbs herbs people love buying, using herbs because they grow like weeds i think herbs are weeds honestly especially mint put it in its own container you're gonna have mint for life okay mint grows like crazy and it takes over everything so make sure it's on its own container but maybe i'll do a separate video talking about like easy things to grow right so i'll put that on a separate video another tip that i have is to grow marigolds and you can just put them in the pots with like your tomatoes your eggplant pretty much all of your veggies because what it does is it helps to repel those bad insects that can come and try to eat up on all your food definitely add those marigolds to your pots and also you can harvest the flowers and you can use them in your spiritual practice if you do have a spiritual practice the other name for marigold is uh, calendula and people yeah, I like to use that in their spiritual practice. You can even make a hair oil. I heard it's really good for your hair. So yes, definitely grow marigolds. Plus they're pretty and they attract pollinators. Um, but yes, when it comes to what to actually put in your containers, what type of soil to use, as long as you don't get gardening soil, you're pretty much going to do okay. Do not get gardening so so soil. So the thing about soil is that it has to have enough drainage and needs to be able to retain enough moisture for your plant to thrive. If it doesn't have the right drainage, if it's too clumpy, it's too dense, then the plant is not gonna be able to grow and it's gonna hold on. Well, it, I mean, it's gonna grow, but it's, it's in a container. So it's gonna be too compact and the plant is not gonna be able, the roots are not gonna be able to really grow. So only get potting soil. Potting soil can get expensive. I think the soil is probably the most expensive thing out there. That's why with your containers, with anything you're growing, pretty much with uh, gardening, with fruits and vegetables, your container size, the bigger you go, the better, really. But you always have to think about, okay, I have to put soil in here. This is going to get expensive. So what you can do is you can get something called sphagnum peat moss. It's like this fluffy, like airy i really don't know what it is but it's like this fluffy airy uh, mixture that you can add to your potting soil so i would do like if you have like a two cubic foot um bag of potting soil and you do half of that with sphagnum peat moss and you just do the half and half so one to one ratio if you're using one uh, cubic foot of potting soil use one cubic foot amount of um sphagnum peat moss and y'all you can just eyeball this and me i just had since i'm out here and i live in a shared community i don't have a wheelbarrow or anything to mix all this in i put my stuff in a little tote little box that i keep underneath my little garden little um pallet situation i got over here and i will put all my dirt in there put my sphagnum peat moss in there and mix it all together in there that's another tip if you don't have a wheelbarrow you need to mix all your stuff just get a little tote box that you put everything in and when you're done mixing it you can store stuff in there too so that's another tip for you all as well but that's that um oh my gosh it's getting hot y'all so next yeah, so don't use um, gardening soil, use potting soil. And if you wanna kind of make that potting soil stretch, ma um, mix it with some sphagnum peat moss. And then also, if you have old potting soil, as long as it doesn't look like it's some mold or something happening in there, you can mix and then add some sphagnum peat moss, add some, um, some new potting soil in there to like refreshen it up. And then I'm gonna add some plant food. So all I buy, is either plant food or worm castings and i just put whatever the measurements they say you should add that's what i add in there i use i really like worm casting and plant food those are the two things that i add and i do that right when i'm about to start um start my my plant so if i want to plant a tomato plant i go ahead and i do my potting soil and then i add in my plant food 
and boom that's what i started off with and then every week i'll fertilize it i know it seems like once you start learning like oh my god i gotta fertilize i gotta buy this i gotta buy that don't get overwhelmed just plan everything out and at least start off with your potting soil and start off with your seedlings or start off with your seeds it's okay don't get overwhelmed i know watching these videos you'll be like okay what do i gotta do how much is it just start the garden and you're gonna be okay plants are really you know pretty resilient as long as you water them and they got drainage and they have the soil that they need to grow in they got that sunlight they're gonna be okay they, they, they'll give you um they'll be forgiving to you okay so um what is that oh so yeah i will fertilize once a week and for my fertilizer i use gross home and i'll just add a cap of that into my um my water canister that I have, my watering canister, and I'll do that once a week to all my plants, except I didn't do it to like my blueberries, I think, because blueberries, you're not supposed to water them until they flower, and my blueberry plant never flowered, so I didn't have to ever throw any fertilizer in there to her. So yeah, that's that. I know it's pretty, it's probably still overwhelming to you all because it's a lot to think about, but really, it's easy. Like, this stuff, you're gonna be amazed at how easy it is to grow of course once you get into it you know growing tomatoes you got to take off the little suckers on there you got to do this you're going to do that but really the, the i think the hardest part is just starting it decide maybe start with five things you want to grow look up how to grow those things the size containers that you need get your potting soil do all this and the third and get it started then once you get more confident with that go on to the next thing and that and that and that and you'll just it's just like anything else that you do it can be extremely you know complicated or it can be extremely easy another thing that i do suggest is that you join facebook groups um i had so much fun in facebook groups over the summer it was just nice and communal and gardening folks are really nice folks like gardening folks plant folks is nice folks so definitely join those facebook groups especially if you join some plant or gardening facebook groups that are in your area like i have one just for here in st louis and they'll tell you like hey we got this here this is on sale at this place this is on sale at this place oh they got free soil over here oh they got free mulch over here oh so yeah do that join facebook groups ask questions people will give you stuff like i had somebody give me a zucchini plant for free i had people give me um some chicken wire for free that i really needed and once you start showing and posting stuff on your facebook and your social media your friends and family be like hey i got some containers or hey i got this old um bag of potting so i ain't use you want it like people will just be like here you go here you go here you go it's just like it's perfect it's perfect so i love it you know once you become a gardener you realize how resourceful you can be so when something is in a container it loses a lot of the moisture easily um, because it doesn't have the earth you know the earth kind of keeps things compact it doesn't have that so what you need to do is either get you some mulch or get you some type of like straw something to put on the actual um dirt so that you don't have to deal with weeds because weeds will fly on over and start growing in your um, pot and take over the, the nutrients and oxygen and all well carbon dioxide i guess that your plant needs so you need to be able to pull those out when you can pull them out it helps to retain moisture and it helps to cut down on your weeds i am going to probably do straw this year because i used mulch last year and i use like dyed mulch and then just me thinking about it and like people being like you probably shouldn't use dyed mulch uh people didn't really tell me that i think i read it somewhere and i was like you know what i'm gonna probably use straw this year because it's more natural and it's probably less expensive but mulch is pretty cheap i used it all last year and i was okay with it but definitely put something down um on top of there to like i said prevent the weeds to help retain moisture and to keep your plant healthy definitely put mulch on the actual uh dirt um, yeah that's in your container that's some plants are not gonna want potting soil they're gonna meet they're gonna want more um sandy kind of like um they're not gonna need a lot of moisture like for instance i have this lavender plant right here in front of me she's been going strong she's been here since last year i just cut her down she survived the entire winter and what i use in there is i use a um a cactus mix or a mix that you would use if you were growing like succulents and things like that i use that in there so definitely look and see what type of soil your plants need too for the most part potting soil will do but for some plants they do want um they do want a different type of soil so keep that in mind it might be the same way they it might grow better because you gotta think this is something that's probably grown in like more of a mediterranean type of area or 
area where the soil is more naturally sandy so it doesn't want all that moisture it doesn't like to be wet lavender don't want to be wet she's okay being dry so keep that in mind when you're growing certain things because you don't want to spend all this money on ceilings and containers and do all that and you're like why is my plant not growing and it's just because you should have just bought that five dollar bag of cactus mix and thrown that in there you know another mistake that i see a lot of people do when they have container gardens is that they put way too many plants in one container you need to look at how big this plant is going to grow if you put like three tomato plants in one little pot that's not tomatoes get huge so you need to make sure that you're putting just maybe one plant in there looking to see how big it's going to grow looking to make sure you have enough space um, you're going to definitely get more out of that plant when you put it in a bigger container they're not like house plants some house plants like to be kind of cramped into a little bitty pot no vegetables and fruits they want a lot of space so do not overcrowd your pots um, but if you do by mistake do that you could possibly go back in there and transplant them so take out one plant put another another pot um, and go from there and it may not cause any issues to your plant um, just go ahead and try because I did it a few times because I made mistakes um, but yeah definitely do not overcrowd your pot get yourself on a water um, routine because once you get busy and you're working and you're doing stuff with your kids and you're out here doing all this other stuff, you can forget to water your plants. You can. And you are the only one adding nutrients to your plants, the only one adding water. Yes, Mother Nature sometimes will add in some water for you if it rains, but you're the only one. So make sure that you put yourself on a little watering routine so it becomes just a part of your daily habits. So maybe every time you wake up, you drink some water and you go ahead and you water all your plants before it gets hot outside. Another tip with watering your plants, try not to get the leaves wet, especially if you're watering in the summer, like when it's really, really hot. Once those leaves get wet, it might cause it to actually burn. But I'm going a little too deep into this. But um, yeah, you might even have to water twice a day. So keep that in mind as well. But definitely, I like to water in the morning before it gets too hot so the roots can have a chance to suck up all that water and be good and then maybe like maybe like around four o'clock I'll come back out again and check on them and water them again I don't like to water at nighttime because the water just kind of sitting there and you know it's I don't want my plants to become uh, too heavy with the moisture so that's just a little tip I'm trying to things or anything else I think that's it I probably made this video too long but I just want to give you all some tips I want you to be motivated you can grow your own food it's super fun it's super therapeutic it's super freaking awesome like, yeah, this stuff is awesome. You should do it. You definitely should do it. I hope you do it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to get more videos just like this. I love you all. I appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. Peace. Thank you so much. Oops. Got a leaf on it? Okay. Thank you so much, Pepper Picker. It's all right there. No, let's leave that one. It's too high. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Oops. It's okay, Mommy. I have to get up. And a warm I think don't get Those good. onions. Look at Rylan. That's onions. Yep, onions. Gotta clean them off. Okay. Hi. Hi. Say like. Like. Comment. Hi. Subscribe. Apply. She told y'all it wasn't me, it was her.